Hey, podcast audience, welcome to episode 76 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're talking about mental agility. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. Brand is only about your customer, your listener, your relationships, whoever's on the other side of that. If you're thinking in terms of brand, you're thinking in terms of the other people. If you're not thinking in terms of the other people, then you're not thinking about it the right way. I am so excited for today's episode because in so many ways, the podcast has come full circle and I'll explain why. Today's guest is a woman by the name of Dr. Nicole Lipkin. Um, She's out of Philly, so she's already kind of a favorite because she understands how to live in the best city in the world. But she's um, a psychologist. She's had a private practice. She's a consultant. Um, She's more educated than I will ever be. And uh, she talks about mental agility and organizational health and relational health and has a really great perspective because she's not only done clinical work, individual one-on-one, but she does organizational work now, um, consults with a lot of businesses, a lot of organizations on how to just be healthy. And I'll let her talk about that more. And uh, she's a new mom too. So that's always fun to talk about, you know, the most important things in life. So I hope you enjoy getting to know Dr. Nicole Lipkin. So thank you so much for spending some time with us today on the Clarity Clarity Compressed audience. Um, It's been great. Oh, it's the best. And you're near Philly. So it's like, this is like my favorite podcast already. Awesome. (laughs) It's awesome. Just like that. What you may not know, and I don't think anybody else uh, in uh, our audience knows, is that the very first podcast I ever recorded in my entire life was with you. Really? Back at the CBT uh, the convention, first. you were the very first. I tried to fake it, like I really knew what I was doing. You totally faked it. Well, yes. wow, yes. I, I did not know that. Impressive. So it, it's cool to see this come full circle, and I feel like now we actually have an audience to yeah. hear you and uh, kind of learn from you know your experience and your input. So thanks for joining us. This has been a long That's time awesome. coming, <laughs> and uh, so I'm excited for round two. Awesome. Um, so the topic today, and you do a. Let's first, why don't you give like the 60 second uh, summary of what do you do? Why do you love doing it? Yeah. And uh, we'll start there. Okay. So I am an organizational psychologist. So what that means is that I go into organizations and I work with leadership teams and I look at the culture and I make teams and cultures uh, work as best as they can, help people reach their potential, help cultures reach their potential. So I'm the CEO of Equilibrium Leadership Consulting. So we do executive coaching, leadership development, cultural assessment, and and consulting. And I'm also the founder of Young Leader Project, which is a leadership development program for kiddos. Um, what and, ages? Yeah, uh, you seven say kiddos. to eleven. We're targeting seven to eleven. You know, when kids That's... are starting to stop looking inward and look outward and see their impact on the world, and wow. it's, they impact the world. So yeah, so that's my background. That's what and, I do. And you also have a practice. Is that is that right? Uh, yeah. Well, so I also own Equilibria Psychological and Consultation Services. Yep. That's a thirty-five person therapy practice. I I own it, but I have a leadership mm-hmm. team running it. So I I yep. no longer do clinical work. I do more executive coaching, leadership development, that kind Got of work. Got you. Yeah. But you came up through doing a lot yeah. of clinical work, I right? Came up, yeah. I'm a psychologist, so I came up doing clinical work. I had a I had an MBA and a doctoral in clinical psychology and combined those things to be doing organizational stuff. How fun. You know, I like that. Love it. That combination is great, I think, because people that just go into the business world and organizational psych, they don't have the advantage of really getting their minds around like the root issues. Like you see them play out in a business. Yeah. But the closer you get to it, you realize like, these are like the same issues. They're just manifesting in this organizational yeah. way. The bottom line is like, until we're all robots, until the robots take over, it's humans that we're working with. And so therefore you need to understand human behavior. And you probably have the most job security. You probably have more <laughs> job security than anybody in the planet because people are always going to be messed up and they're always going to try to understand why I do what I do. Right. Hopefully so the ro- people are trying to understand what they do, what they do, why they do what they do. Hopefully. That's, well, that's really the, important, but not everyone has it. 
how would you even, let's start by you defining, what do you define as mental agility? Yeah, so I define it a little bit differently than kind of what you would, if you, if you, if you looked it up, how it's defined, like keeping our brains agile, like as we mm-hmm. age. So the way mm-hmm. I define it is working with your own mindset and working with how you approach people and the world and the environment to be as open as possible, to be as Mm -hmm. flexible mentally as possible. Because Mm -hmm. the bottom line, when you think about, when you think about our world right now, like you think about wars or, or, or politics or religion or everything, everything stems from the inability to be agile, to be so stuck in your ways and biased with your own point of view that you can't see another person's point of view. You're rigid, right? The opposite would be rigidity, right? Right. And that makes us, that, that creates fights, it creates arguments, it creates my way or the highway kind of thinking, which immediately Mm -hmm. causes this with other people. So it's kind of the art and science of keeping our brains and our minds open and flexible to see other ways so we can shift and move and be agile and be quick. Mm -hmm. What are the most common things you see that get organizations stuck? Well, I think, you know, that's a good question. I think, I think it's having the same people in the same room making the same damn decisions over and over and over again. You know, if you look at, you know, and, and, and one of the things I wrote about in my book, if you look at some of the big, big organizations that have been taken down, it's because of this. Yep. Like, you know, I think one of the most interesting ones is remember borders. <laughs> okay. Yep. Right. I sure do. Like, <laughs> I do. Bye bye. But, you know, it's really yep. interesting what happened to borders. So Amazon starts taking over the world and Barnes and Noble says, mm-hmm. you know what? We have to shift our model. We have to yep. start focusing on our online strategy. Yep. They saw the similar yeah. thing. And right? Borders was they like, got it. okay, oh, oh crap, this is coming after us. We should just do what we've always been doing. And they focused on their brick mm-hmm. and mortar st- strategy. So they yep. were. Let's make this yeah. better. Let's make this sinking ship yeah. look better. So I think that kind yeah. of stuff of this, like, um, and then, and then you get into this kind of group think thing going on where you don't want to challenge the status quo you don't and i understand it like you've been doing great yeah you have had like market domination you've been doing fantastic for a really long time and then all of a sudden something comes along and like amazon's it's like you gotta change that's super super hard to stop doing something you've been doing so well for so long and shift yep so I think one of the things that goes wrong is again having the same people making the same decisions in the same room. So no fresh thinking introduced. You gotta bring outside people in. You gotta bring bring people that are gonna be objective and then are gonna challenge. It's about taking the emotion out of the room, dealing with the emotion. Mm-hmm. You can't ignore it. Yep. Dealing with the emotion, it's sad. It's a loss. Sure. It's, you grieve over that. But then yep. bringing in <laughs> fresh perspectives and a way to do. You know, there's ways to walk people through that kind of thinking. So there you have it, my conversation with Dr. Nicole Lipkin. Um, We're gonna link all her information up below in the comments. She is worth paying attention to, follow her on social, buy the books. Uh, They're just very insightful. And you know, you can kind of get a lot out of them just on a surface level because some of the principles are just very clear. But also I would say that her books, if you like understanding the biology beneath the thinking and some of the more uh, heady, I'll call it the heady things that are kind of above my pay grade. But if you like taking a deeper dive, the book also helps you take a deeper dive if you're the kind of person that likes that. So again, just glad to make the introduction. Thank you so much for listening and watching whatever you're doing today. Uh, it, It means a lot that you spent some of that attention here with us and this audience. A lot of things going on, a lot of cool things coming. Got some announcements I really wanna make, but we still need to get a few more pieces in place before I do. Oh, see these hats? See that? Well. I am going to be making these hats available. Uh, I ordered some samples in. I want to make sure the quality is right before I sell anything. So um, should have some to show you soon and hopefully get them passed around so um, we can kind of expand this clarity community and have some little bit of reminders throughout our day to pursue clarity. So that's my reminder to you now and the rest of this week and probably for the rest of my life is that I hope you pursue clarity. Thanks for spending some time here. Talk to you soon.